Right. 272. <laughs> 272 will open on the 29th of May, which will end on the 10th of June, which will be the update date on the 10th of June. And we we'll start with this update 272. On this update, what we need to know that it will be generally the last flash beta, which, as we've told you during the Crossmono, will be around the 20 year celebration, the true fair, and everything like that. Our teams will be very busy with Unity. So this will be the last beta on the Flash client. So we've benefited from this one. We've used this one to anticipate the launching of Unity with its new servers. And that's why for this new update, we have done some adjustments. Some adjustments on Monster Family that weren't necessarily the most requested because uh, the <coughs> the players are usually confronted with problematics around level 200s but we wanted to go over some family of mobs that are lower level um, usually around temporises uh, when you have new services in unity the very few, few hours of play that's where we found some issues with some mob families where you have to craft some items you have to redo these dungeons on repeat in order to be able to craft the items you require so we have gone back over them and rechecked everything <coughs> especially some of them which had um, which required or were missing a distinct identity or didn't have mechanics that were straightforward or quite direct so I've sh I'm showing you some of them here <coughs> in this life I'm not going to show you all of the modifications that we've done it would be too much but as ever Everything will be very well detailed in the changelog with all the modifications that will take place. So we've only put the one on the Quarko, which is one of one of the most important modifications, should I say, because usually at low level, uh, players have mono element uh, mono element um, builds, and if you come across this boss with the wrong set, you you're screwed. Can you tell us, Crocus, about this uh, very briefly? Yeah, so we wanted to retain this resistance aspect of this boss, but we also wanted <coughs> to look over the mechanic itself. And we wanted to work something around uh, pushback damage. So if you do pushback, da pushback damage to the Quark, you reduce his resistances. And in order to lower his resistances, you need to kill the other quarks with him in the fight so you delock the boss you have uh, hands on you introduce pushback damage to lower levels which is quite a simple mechanic but it's a good opportunity to present it and that was the main direction line for this complete revamp and now let's say this way with these families um, it provides the player with a sort of memory what they remember in order to delock this boss I have to pay attention to this so there's the big change of the mechanic but we also changed some spells which lasted too long or had too powerful an effect so micro details micro adjustments to make it more easy to read and easier to handle and more agreeable as an experience so here I see that you've uh, spoken about the boss himself but also the family and also other families who will be changed. I'm putting some of them that will have been changed. There's a lot of adjustments, balancings, uh, removal of some mechanics that were too too powerful or too too strong. Here again, more details. More details will be in the change log. If you want to test it on the beta, you will have all of the potions to adjust your level. And generally speaking, it is best to test these dungeons uh, characters at their own level so that you can get an appreciation for all the changes that have happened and everything. So this has allowed us to consolidate and enhance the experience of new players when they encounter these new bosses. So this was the first subject that wasn't really expected, but we wanted to discuss it before the release of Unity. Second topic, which is a topic that was highly, highly requested, which is the legendary item. We have talked about it during the December uh, live. Yeah, we had the same team, I remember. We've talked about it. We've mentioned legendary items very rapidly. Just a reminder, <coughs> legendary item or powerful 
objects, but are situational. There's 16 of them, they're all level 200, and they all have a passive on the equipment that can be triggered under certain conditions. They're linked to infinite dreams because the resources to craft them come from... Uh, and the um, crafting is linked to a series of quests, 6 out of 6. They were introduced a few years ago now, and throughout their history they had some little adjustments majoritarily on their passive because it was principally our um, balancing axe we've talked about it on uh, axis we've talked about it in december and we saw that some people have mentioned it in chat right before the live we were working on it we've mentioned it in december and we said that we're working on a tool to migrate the effects of objects how do we explain this to you um this is why the march the March uh, update, we've only worked on the set bonus. We couldn't work on the effects of items because if you modify the effect, you can't modify the old objects that were already in circulation. So it would create, in one sense, some objects that were that be just became complete trash compared to the new ones. Or, in retrospect, if you nerf it, the old ones are more powerful than the current ones or the new ones generate. This is why uh, legendary items were principally balanced by their passive. But this work we've been doing it and we've been working on a tool because we've always remained unsatisfied with this um, small way of balancing it. And now is the moment to present to you the tool that we've been working on. And that's why on this live we have Tal Shara who will talk to us about the migration object tool. What is the logic behind it? How do we make it so that we can change all objects in one hit? First thing is there will be a lot of things that happen in the object migration. It will be at the level of every line of effect, we can perform different actions on it <clears throat> in order to achieve balance. And here, the first thing that we generally do is transformations. We call them A and B. So the line that we had <laughs> before is A and the new line is B. When we transform a line, there's a lot of things that happen, but to simplify a bit, all of these texts that you can see here, we've also specified in the develop. It's a dev. Uh, it's a topic that is quite delicate and really difficult, and we're trying to present you this. You can screen this, but it will be in the dev block. The more <laughs> important thing to understand is that we have a management of the stats quality. Let's take an example. If you take a Jahash, if it becomes agility all of a sudden, as an example, and it goes from 80 power to 100 agility, typically someone who has, who, now who has 80, 80 power will become 100 agility, right? Just to keep the quality and invertly, if he has the minimum uh, stats on the po power, they will have the lowest agility of the new stat. So this is a matter of proportion. It's a proportion of from the old to the new, from the new to the old. And the problem comes up when we have overs because we can't r go over the maximum. Uh, oh, that can't we can't go over the one hundred and one rule. So if we have overs, we have to remove them so we don't have items that aren't theoretically po impossible. So. In theory, we've added these rules so that there is no item with stats that can't be had using conventional Smith Magus methods. The gold is certainly and especially not to create items that would only be possible during this migration. They can never be created. So we, we can do transformation, we can add new lines and we can remove lines. These methods are much simpler. So, as you understand it, there will either be added lines or subtracted lines, less lines or more lines. But on the transformations, after specific niche cases that you will read about on the dev blog to see how it works exactly, knowing very well that no object, nowhere, whether it's in a haven bag, in a guild bag, in an inventory, no item will be spared during the migration. So. All of them will 
get changed. It will be during the maintenance update and every object, wherever they're located physically, will be affected by this migration. A tiny detail before we move to the transcendence uh, situation. When I was talking about to put stats within the theoretical possible, I, it only talked about the lines that we wanted to change. So if we decided not to change vitality and someone has decided to over vitality without trance, next, vitality stays the same. It, the over stays on the lines that we've decided not to change. We will have to put examples because it's just too difficult to visualize all of this. And in any case, what about trans runes? Because you've mentioned them a couple of times. Right. Trans runes are a bit delicate and particular cases to manage. They are a bit annoying because you can find items that have exos and overs and that aren't modifiable. So the only possibility to migrate these items is the transcendence will have to go away. And the fact, oh, that line. So any trans item will go back to being able to be maged. And if the trans had added an over or uh, an exo or an over, so if it's an exo, the exo disappears. If it's an over, it will go back to the maximum theoretical of that line. So exo is gone. It will be mageable, and if you have an over, it goes back to the maximum theoretical. Just the whole idea is to have coherent stats on these items. And remember, with transcendence, you can pass stuff. You can't exo MP and exo trans, ex aside from the beta. So it's not possible to lose an MP exo. So I think we're good on this migration bit right here forgive me he sneezed if you have any questions we will be able to answer them at the end of the live and we will answer them at the dev block <laughs> there will be a big chunk on the migration bit it's something that is quite complex that we try to find uh, to try and answer pretty much all of the case scenarios just so it's fair for everyone and as many people as possible so you'll have more details in the dev block bit so this migration tool has allowed us to retouch uh, legendary items. So this migration tool, we can use it on absolutely every item. Let's, let's imagine, let's take an example. We have an object, a cosmetic object that we've sold that was <laughs> linked to the character. We could use this migration tool to modify it. So we can use this tool to modify absolutely everything, all the items, cosmetics, but we just have to make sure, we have to know that it's a big process. It, the file to prepare is humongous. It's really difficult to dictate what effects should take in place, what should go. So it does take a lot of time, more than a spell balancing where, or an item that we don't care about changing the stats. So don't wait or expect that we will modify hundreds of items every three days. It's a big process and it's time consuming and difficult. So on the last three years, there has been hardly any changes of this nature. Uh, in a year and a half, like we've changed white rat, black rat. There were a few exceptions, but let's say just because we have this new powerful tool that allows us to solve for this problem doesn't mean we're just going to start using it left and right and <laughs> just put it in your head. The idea is not to use it for everything, but to allow us to make modifications and transformations where absolutely necessary. And this is why we are talking about legendary items, because there's been a big disparity between the power and effects of certain items. So despite liking some effects and not liking them, it's not really easy to change an effect to balance it. And that's why for this migration tool, the legendary items were the primary, the best use case for this kind of tool. As we've said, um, <coughs> there's a big volume of level 200s and we don't want to jump straight to item. We're going to test them on the legendary items and everything. Right, I'm going to put a little disclaimer before I click on the next image that's going to appear. All the modifications that will be presented to you now and that will be presented to you in the changelog might be subject to change during the beta, obviously. That's the whole reason behind it. So 
if you want to do speculation in any sense, go ahead. This is Slix. Go and buy the items, sell whatever you want. But everything is liable to change. And we're also open to make balancings if we deem it necessary. So I just thought I'd put it out there. And that's the whole idea of uh, having this tool and having the better. Just like the classes where we have a lot of changes to uh, stats, to the spell variants and stuff like that. It takes time to find a perfect balance. We will be very receptive and we keep and retain the right to change everything about it. Knowing very well that all 16 have been modified. What? Even some of them have, have had only minuscule modifications, but all of them have been changed. Uh, we kept the essence of every item, so you will keep recognizing them, but the mechanics have all changed. So the passives, there were some value um, changes, but the usability is still there. So in any case, let's present three. We'll only present three to you today. It will allow us to demonstrate what we've been talking about and it would have been too much to present all the 16. So we will present, you will see them all in the change log and it will come out during the beta. But today we'll be seeing three and you'll see uh, three tomorrow you'll have the dev log. The first one. Dodge Audacity, right, what were you looking at? On the left side of the column is what you had and the right is the new version that you will have. So, on this very item, the first one, the initiative malice is going away. It goes into uh, minus um, AP, uh, AP withdrawal and we have three extra lines. So, the three new lines to define its stats of each line, it'll have to be added on to an existing one to conserve the quality of the item. But also, um, we always keep in mind that any item that we change will never lose um, value of the stats and stuff like that. So no item gets worse when... So, oh, and when we round up things, Uh, when we round up, like vitality, because there's more points, we will round some values necessarily. But each time we are faced with this problematic, we will round up. So the new stats are minus 20 uh, AP withdrawal, 5 to 7 critical, 3 to 5 air res, 3 to 5 res fire. Hold on. I will... I will pause it and read the thing. So the new passive is every time, at the beginning of every turn, the caster will teleport randomly on a cell adjacent, and then this is the new bit, or not change position at all. If an entity is present on the cell, the destination cell, the carrier or the caster will swap positions with it. If he doesn't move, he wins 20% of chances to crit and 80 pushback damage for one turn. This is the new passive on uh, Dodge's Audacity. And it reduces your ability to remove AP from enemies. 5 to 7 crits. I don't know if that's damage or percentage. And 2 lines of resistance, air and fire. And the idea is to make them... We don't want to make every single legendary item viable in every build. We just enhance them so they're more usable and situational. And we've chosen those two lines of res because they're the elements of the dodge, of, of the thing itself. And we've added the swap effect as well. <coughs> Which means if there's someone on the cell that you will go and teleport to, if they're there, then you will swap if they're not gravitated or whatever, any state that prevents it from happening. And we've added a crit bonus of 20% if you can't move anywhere. It was one of the least used and more the most trash legendary items and we've buffed it with a bit of a risky passive and stats, but we will see how it goes. Add and if you the cell is in a wall and you can TP to it, then you also get the bonus. On the three uh, examples, I, he's reading chat. There is not going to be Lady Jess and there's not going to be Jahash changes on this uh, presentation. They didn't pick them out of the three that we will talk about. Second one, the Thousand League Boots. Okay, so the old stats, 500 initiative, 350 vitality, 40 power. Now the new, we will have a, a buff on the initiative slightly less vitality, 20 more 
power to make it more uh, usable on offensive builds rather than just um, turn one pandas for placement we want to make it more viable on more uh, uh, offensive builds we want it to replace some items in offensive niches and for it to be uh, present and viable in much more and then the power has been augmented a little bit to achieve that we have uh, um, dodge up to 20 uh, dodge which enhanced the um, use case of the boots giving you mobility so it enhances that and then 10% air resistance maximum which makes the item a bit more viable on a tank set or on a proper um, tank build or offensive build yeah so it will work both in PVM and PvP nowadays if it's all good and the last example is the Bureau the passive did not change on the previous one you still get 2 MP lose 1 MP 2 MP minus 1 MP and the last one is the Bureau <coughs> with a modification of conditions to the expense of the MP and this is something that we have done on items uh, that there's not too many but you will be able to get so every eight item that gave you AP uh, MP I will not specify anymore but any item that resembles Bihorado have seen a similar kind of change which means so you can use 12 AP but you no longer get the MP which will complicate certain theory crafting because it won't allow you to play without Volbis or without Nomad thanks to this but will also allow you to play in a spell, oops, I don't know what that means. <coughs> you'll be able to play it with uh, other builds that allow you 12 AP, but that means you'll struggle for MP. So we've buffed the pushback damage up to 40, the passive. It's an item that required critical hits in order to benefit from its passive, but it didn't give you any crits, so now it will be able to buff that, which is quite nice, decent, and it will give you air resistance because it is a resist an air we stay on the element of the item in order to buff those in terms of resistance this is going to be the same for all of them speculate if you want and on the passive on the passive the maximum is still 100 pushback damage but instead of just two turns we've added an extra turn so you can benefit from that for an extra turn so we've changed the passive of the Bureau but it opens more possibilities now you have to theory craft around the MP that you lost but still think about all the pushback damage that you've gained and the fact that it's more viable with crits <laughs> I am seeing the chat blow up with questions about Jahash and Lady Jess shall we talk about it what do you reckon guys shall we talk about it <laughs> yes let's do it come on let's do it let's talk about it right in essence we will nerf Jahash a little bit on its offensive build we will reduce a little bit the defensive aspect the defensive bit will be increased and the offensive one will lower so the jazz does not really move a lot it's less useful the spell damage stay the resistance malice that will go away Ooh. oh Wow, so the, the minus 10% melee resistance is gone and now it will remove your um, uh, AP reduction, MP reduction and uh, dodge and lock. So it will have many more maluses but it doesn't reduce your ability to take damage. But the, um, the resistance remains, it's still a very powerful item but it will be, it will still be the best uh, cape in the game as far as pure raw damage. But this aspect of slightly offensive, slightly defensive, we reduced it so it's not clearly overpowered compared to the rest. What is more interesting, what is more interesting, which is the Lady Jess, where stats will have changed, which more interesting is the... Uh, so instead of removing 100 lock, now it's gone down to 60. With the uh, dodge... Uh, the dodge will decrease it's no longer uh, you will it will reduce your ability to dodge uh, so mobs will be more likely to dodge you and go away and it just makes it so that there is not one single item that just completely locks every mob in the game um, but most of the level 200 content with lady jess was pretty much broken 
you could just use it everywhere. So the movement from 100 to 60 makes a big difference. But some aspects will be buffed. So we've nerfed some aspect of these, but we've buffed them in others that we will not tell you about, which will come with some uh, interesting things that we'll let you discover on the dev blog. So there we are. Thank you very much for uh, these two last minute additions for the Lady Jess and Jahash. New legendary item. I've clicked too fast, but we have two new legendary items coming in 272. They were very much expected. I think... I think it was the graphists that added files to the game from back when and they were in the files. People knew they were coming but we've never had the time to put them together into an item and release them in the game. So here it will be interesting because uh, unlike other items where we have a um, we have visibility <coughs> of what the utility, how to handle them and this these are new items. We know absolutely nothing about how you will handle them, how they will fit in the game. But we will keep an eye on them a lot more than the others, just so we can react quickly. So the first one is the Destiny Scissors. Destiny Scissors. It talks about the reunification of the Dolphuses. The idea is these are daggers, <coughs> I must specify. Well, so, when the holder gets the, um, when something dodges the holder, he becomes rooted. And if he starts his turn at least next to one enemy, he gains 15% weapon damage for one turn. So, this, it's up to you to test how you will use them, tell us what you found. But this is really interesting to bring back weapons back into the game and make them a bit more powerful generally. These are the weapon stats, 350 vitality, 400 initiative, 120 strength. Because we didn't have any item that is pure strength. So we filled this niche with this legendary item. So you have up to 10% uh, neutral resistant, some tackle, some lock. Uh, Malus in dodge, 20 uh, MP parry, minus 20 AP parry, and minus 10 resistance, uh, melee resistance. So you're frail in melee, but you deal a lot more damage. So you either get hit hard, but you also deal a lot of damage. This is really cool. It, it will be up to you to theory craft and see where it works and stuff like that. It's true that for the damage, I haven't mentioned this, it will be 3 AP. No critical hits, and it will be 23 uh, neutral uh, steel. No crits because we're very wary about neutral damage because it's a big problem nowadays. In theory, crafting there's usually a hole in neutral, so we've tried to add neutral resistances here, there, wherever we can. We've done that on some, some sets, and we continue to add neutral resistance to balance out with other resistances which are clearly way ahead than neutral. Well, we don't know yet about the chest Eslex. I'm literally live translating. <laughs> I don't. Uh, I don't know any more than what I'm hearing right now. So with this uh, malice melee resistance balances out the fact that you gain 15% uh, extra damage for that one turn, and you can use them up to twice. And it's life steal, no crits. And as we've said, two new legendary items. The second one will be the uh, Brewmare's Shiver. Which will be a uh, wand, as you can see here in the screen. Uh, if the passive of it, if it, it resembles the war's hallbacks, essentially, if you are in contact with an enemy, you gain 20 AP withdrawal for one turn, otherwise, you gain 20 uh, um, dodge. And if you kill an enemy outside of the summons with direct damage, you become invisible for one turn. It's unbewitchable, so you can hit under invisibility. So you have to kill something, you become invisible, and you can still deal damage and not lose your invisibility uh, while doing it. Just like I said, these items, these are tests. We're trying to do a fun new concept. If it's overpowered or too weak, we will change them later on. We have the tools. We have the tools to modify the stats in the item so much easily. And the easiest thing remains to just change the passive if it's too broken. And in any case, right now, we are uh, becoming more creative on things. 
we have the updates so we can be quick to change things on a Tuesday and we have the tools to do that very rapidly. Here, I forgot to add the uh, stats. So with damage, we're 38, 34 uh, water damage. Uh, th 400 vitality, 120 chance, 10% resistance. It's a wand that you can use in close combat. This is a novelty that we've never had before. Something that we want to test. We will let you <laughs> have fun with it. You have minus 60 pushback resistance. Minus 40 lock. You gain 20. Uh, ah. Lock. The uh, tackle. Now we move on to the legendary uh, pets. Did we say that there will be modifications for this? I don't think we have specifically announced it, but I do remember that we have talked about it internally. So here, we have done some balancing. Here, there will be no migration to do or anything because it will be directly a change on the passive, which is much easier. There's 27 legendary powers that we can add to pets or uh, pets amount level 100. They have been modified during the update vis-a-vis um, -vis the uh, temporal anomalies. 263 to 64 um, there was a little balancing wave and so there was a modification this is the second balancing wave which will be a bit lighter than the previous one if i can say it like that so we will balance 20 out of the 27 legendary powers that will be affected in this change it's majoritarily up buffs so the legendary powers that have been a bit ignored compared to the others, we have brought, we have tried to bring them back. So the old uh, balancing that we've done, we tried to balance them out, but we've noticed that there were a few that were way ahead of all the others, and there were a few that were lagging behind. So there was very little modification in terms of functioning, but just values, little things that will change. So the Kitsu, for example, will go from five um, uh, dodge to seven. Uh, Shampa will go from 1 AP, uh, gain AP for 1 turn, to 2 turns. The PU Celerity, um, I don't know what that is. Uh, Dragoff, so uh, Dragon thing. The shield will go from 100 to 150%. So you can expect minuscule changes like that, but only on the value, duration, things like that. Simple things that are sufficient to make them more interesting to use and stuff like that but nothing about the effect itself will change. So we try to do these this way, so you, to give you more options, so you can seek more horizontal optimization without making big changes at the extra high level, because these are really niche items. I've, yeah, I said this earlier, and I didn't go back on this topic earlier, but this is a problematic that we've always had in mind whenever we balanced the legendary item. What we tried to do is not to power creep again and again and again because level 200 is the max level and we try to have a balancing not towards upwards but uh, horizontally avoid power creep right and here we haven't announced it here either but we have some new legendary pet effects we have six in total that will be added in this next update so the first one is the um, uh, Scara Carapace Scara Leaf Scarapace When the holder uh, suffers an AP reduction attempt They win 75% of their level in shield for one turn Cumulable one time uh, You will be able to watch the stream when it's finished uh, The VOD will be up uh, So essentially whenever somebody attempts to remove a uh, we had the mp variant that the pandas used and we thought we need to add the equivalent for ap reduction that is quite similar and this one is representative of a lot more on the logic that we have it will let you to save mp see if you use no mp the next turn you use to mp and you see a lot of these new ones will be added on um they will fall, the new ones will be added like this. So it will be like a, like a cloudy or things like that. You'll find that if you don't use a certain uh, mechanic stat or a thing that you have, you will win it next turn. So you forego it this turn and then you use it later on. Like range, AP, MP. 
uh, there were some classes that used only part of the mechanic but what we thought is to enlarge the portfolio so you can have a wider variety of effects that you want to benefit from on your pet on your pet and also there's something about um, we had to rethink because there's portions that you get the the uh, croquette through so what we've tried to do is to balance we've added six specifically so that every portion of the available ones can have a similar number of effects that you can get from double clicking one so these are the balances that you can expect for the family uh, of pets and now we move on to the last bit before we talk about balancing this is a slide just like we've done during the last update where we put uh, the biggest modification that are more important than others <coughs> so here we will present four of the biggest modifications that we're the most excited about the first one is the reactivation of the infinite dreams ladder let's go <laughs> it's been three lives that we've been talking about this and this one was the last one that wasn't activated out of all of the other ladders so we've talked about it before, but the ladders have been redone. We've reactivated them progressively during the March update. And now the uh, achievements, XP, and what was the other one? There was a third one. No, maybe not. Maybe not. Uh, so, so achievements and XP. And in December, it was Colosseum. So we've reactivated these three. And the last one that remained unactive was the fourth one dreams so this rework on the ladder ha has allowed us to have uh, new integrations of new ladders like uh, we were able to do the uh, shadow event one directly on that so it allowed us to have a more robust system to just have the ladder ready to go and we've put it on the dreams as well the second one is the reduction of latency in the server as i've said earlier in the beginning of the live the objective of this update is to do a latest modifications before unity comes up on which there will be a lot of people and when you say a lot of people playing in the game at once you have a lot of latency so for this update we had done a really big rework for those of you that read the change logs and the dev logs there were some patches that have already been integrated in the game during the last weeks to make some optimizations to reduce the latency but for this update in particular there will be many 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 more modifications that will be sensible and sensitive and this is what we will use the beta instead of just releasing it like we've done a handful of times and it went wrong now we're going to bring them out and test them in the beta and then see how they work do you have any word for us on this yes it has been a few months that we are aware that there are some latencies on servers some more than others like draconeros for example we knew that yeah there's a lot of it happening and also it's a work that we do <laughs> pretty much every week. There are patches that we pass, some things that aren't very visible. It could be a uh, rework of monsters or things like that. It could pretty much come from anywhere. So this is what it is. It's a work <laughs> on the very long term. But really here in the beta, there's a lot of things that will happen that will give us a we, it's a lot of work and we're we're gonna keep an eye on these things if you see anything unusual please do not hesitate to tell us about it so we can profit and benefit from the better being open to make as many changes as possible and be as exhaustive as possible on all the things that we've added the tests are not necessarily representative every time and that's why we need a lot of players to participate so we can create the environment in which we can see whether the thing we added works or not like latency we need a lot of people to log in so there's another thing that is quite technical, I don't know if it's going to interest many people, but uh, very often latencies on servers are not due to one functionality in particular. It's not one thing that will slow down the server. It's usually a conglomerate, a group, a concatenation of effects and things that will collaborate and create the latency. So classes have evolved, there's a lot of F, uh, supplementary effects like Sacri for example. IA in Avalon, IA is your fault. So necessarily at some point with all these new enhanced effects and all these new additions, when they work at the same time all together, the servers tend to have a hard time keeping up with them. So just because there's too too many of them, this is why it happens. And it's never one thing that has caused it. And as ever, there were as we say this, we try and find access of modernization without breaking everything. And Knowing very well that here, there's a little paragraph on the dev blog where we will present to you this in a bit more details. And 
not in too much details, but we'll provide some notions to explain this in further detail for those of you that are interested in latency and how it works and things like that. Here, I want to do a little pause on this live to answer some questions I have seen fling on the chat when we're talking about latency. So some problem of disconnection that are happening right now in the game. So these are problems that have happened since <coughs> two weeks that are linked to Dofus and Dofus Retro. We're well aware and we're investigating the topic and we we have a a a we have an idea of what it is that is causing this. We will test it in the beta starting from tomorrow to see if everything works perfectly. And we will hope to correct this as soon as possible. Third point. <coughs> this one is a modification. I think this will upset a persona. This is the NPC on the Amakna Castle. Uh, it's principally a modification. We will not hide it. It's... It will be a modification to limit the biggest abuses that have been happening on this NPC. We tried, we started digging and we just felt a bit dizzy. There was a lot of shit going on. So there were some uh, golden, when you give him some, uh, when you give him uh, almond and ginger dragon turkeys, he would give you a golden parchment, the scrolls XP. So now instead of getting those, and that's why the price of them blew up recently. Uh, now, instead of it giving uh, those scrolls, it will be mount potions. So this will align with the alliance changes that happen. So if you have mass uh, certificates, you'll be able to generate your own uh, potions for your breeding to sustain it. And the last thing is the cosmetic access. These are things that won't necessarily be visible. They shouldn't absolutely be visible on your end. But... Unity, when it comes, there will be many, many uh, modification, technical modifications to anticipate all the new features that will happen. So this is necessarily the case of cosmetics, which will be a big thing happening. So there won't be any visible change for you. There'll be a big change internally that is happening. But if you ever see any problem with cosmetics, please let us know because we've added some um, um, Mimisimbics and... Uh, Oh, we've added an NPC with cosmetics and Mimisembic so you can test them and see if you find any problem with it without telling you any more, uh, uh, without telling you any more details. <clears throat> Following the modifications we've done to facilitate the duty free. So this is it. And now we end on the class modifications. Right, on the classes. It will be on three parts. We will talk about the Echo Flip, we'll talk about the Sadi. And three other classes that saw modifications. Tell me in the chat which ones you think they have changed. <laughs> as long as it's Kra, I think it will be Kra. Shit. <laughs> Shit. So the last three didn't have complete revamps. They were just changes, minuscule changes like variants and things like that. <laughs> right. Let's talk about the Echo Flip. I need to say something before we even get to this. <coughs> Because we're preparing this uh, release, we have done many, many changes during recent years in order for Unity to have classes with distinct identities that have a distinct gameplay that works, that is fluid, but also a better progress in, uh, progression in the game and things like that. Because if you think about the bosses and dungeons, there will be an, uh, a fluid obtention of variants and spells to accompany your progression while you're growing. So here there's still a lot more to do at this level, but we know that we are so far ahead, we've progressed a lot at this level at least. And it's just that when new servers and temporises that th these changes did not take effect, but we will be wary for that next time. So the principal goal that we wanted to have is to have a solid foundation for Unity, for you as a player, for your progression and things like that, and the fun of the class itself, uh, so that there is a better, more pronounced notion of balancing in the class that you can see as you progress, but also the general structure of the class, and we will talk about it later on. Uh, like some, some other classes, so you can have all the elemental ways on all classes, so some had to be augmented and have more uh, balanced variants per class. So we have a lot of important things to tell you. Pay attention. So now I can put the presentation back. <laughs> some of you had already seen it. So in essence, 
Echo Flip will be a class that will be oriented around critical hits and states that are cards on the class itself. So as we've said, there will always be this uh, system of getting crits when you don't get crits. This is what we've called the Echo Flip's chance. We will conserve and keep. When you don't crit you gain a crit when you don't crit you don't gain crit so the values will change but the core mechanic will remain the same well the idea then is the echo flip i need to do a little bit of explanation of how we got here first of all it is a revamp that was really complex in reality because <laughs> the idea of the echo flip is this character of uh gambling uh randomness it's really difficult to um conserve this uh, fantasy this idea in a tactical game where you don't want to have turns where you do a lot or nothing where you hit 4000 or you don't deal any damage we wanted it to be a bit balanced while keeping that sort of gambling mechanic and chance in a, a gameplay that is viable that people can enjoy and actually play as a class generally because a lot of you remember the echo flip that was on echo flip one it was really fun but it wasn't balanced at all. <laughs> it was f it was frustrating when it didn't have the right uh, effect, or it was broken and everybody else was frustrated because nobody could replicate that. So that massive shambolic randomness has been axed. So we've moved it to the critical aspect right now. Um, so this will make it so that uh, the theory crafting of echo flips will be limited. You don't need as much crits as other classes. And what we've tried to do is turn the Echo Flip into a system of cards. The idea is you have 16 cards, just like it's written right here on the presentation at the bottom. You have four spell, you have the heart for the red ones, the strength or just like a, a normal card today. Ooh, uh, all right, okay, so a spell for AP will be a uh, king. 3 AP will be queen and things like that. So you will be able to pick the card that corresponds. And, and you will have spells that you pick at random from the deck of cards. But that will either deal least damage or reimburse the cost. So you have a, a side that is quite safe that you can play. Definitely viable. But also re remain uh, keep this uh, notion of gambling and randomness and what might happen. Which is optional, but there is also uh, okay. So 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 you have a main, a main gameplay that is safe. You can deal damage. Everything is predictable. But you can also decide to take chances and gambles. And if it works, you get a distinct advantage, not too broken. But you can not have too much uh, of. Um, it can be weak and can be really hard. So we didn't want to go all in on randomness or nothing. But if you're a player, it's up to you to decide. If you want to gamble and take a chance, then you have the possibility to do so. So the idea is that you will have a system of cards and you can pick up to four cards. You can't have two king of hearts, for example. You can have only one of the same type and four cards at the same time. And when you reach four cards, you will have them on top of your head as states on top of your head. There will be f square pictos for the first time in the game. You will have them on top of your head. Once you reach four, all the cards will be used. And in the gameplay, you will have spells that will allow you to exploit the cards that you have accumulated, which will allow you to either do heals, do more uh, damage, heals or shielding. And you have one spell per elemental way that will allow you to use uniquely the cards of this elemental way. So that color specific. So if you want to get rid of all your uh, red ones, you can get rid of them all by using a red uh, spell. And it lets you change your deck of cards as you play. What? What? <laughs> what? I have. It makes absolutely no sense to me. And the other thing is um, multi-elements and utility spells could benefit from a multitude or a diversity of cards. And some others can use a combination of two. Some will use a combination of the sweets, just like poker. If you have, it's, the idea is the echo flips poker. Like the rec op as well is a word that comes from this. So it will allow if you have a suite, for example, like a, a queen, king, whatever, whatever, whatever. If you have a royal suite, 
for example, it will give you the wreck up, which can deal 3k full buffed if you have that. So you have an interest to go and seek cards depending on others. So as you play, you're getting rid of cards, getting new ones, but it's it's brain. You'll have to use a new way of thinking about the play while dealing damage and playing your turns. You're also playing a sort of meta gameplay on top of everything. So, like we've tried to do with other classes, we've tried not <laughs> to have one particular elemental way that is dominant. We've tried to diversify so you can play all of them. And you should have uh, all the basic mechanics like uh, uh, reducing MP, AP, stuff like that, movement and mobility, because we wanted to retain this feline aspect of Ekaflip that's always had good mobility. Hit and move, uh, increase its ability to move around the map and stuff like that. Uh, so it will uh, retain a the aspect of <coughs> a gambler, a player that can do pretty much everything, but you can also play a certain uh, one clear way. It's a new dynamic of play that will be frenzy-like. It will be highly um, interesting. It will not be a four-star. I think we are going up in difficulty. It will no longer be a four-star kind of one. It will get harder. So there's a lot of actions. It will become one of those classes that has a lot of actions to perform per turn in, uh, in its play. It's a revamp that has taken a lot of work. We're intrigued about what could happen with it. We know some spells who still need some buffing, some uh, battering and things like that. We remains to be seen. We've, we've provided a basic kind of set of tools and we will adapt it depending on what you guys do with it. Yeah, so we wanted to offer you the possibility of playing with this new rule book for the Echo Flip. Uh, careful, generally, it's really difficult to present a complete revamp during a live because uh, just like others, some people will uh, who don't care too much about uh, this uh, class or that class, but will try to prevent uh, to to show you what is the logic behind the change that we have done not tell you that it's better or worse or things like that but the best remains for you to go to the better test it for yourself and see what these new mechanics are what they look like you like them and see how they work for yourself we're not going to give you everything right now we're giving you the logic behind it go and try it so you will retain all of the elemental ways but we've added this new identity with the cars and the square things and the gameplay right You've summarized everything, it's perfect. Shall we move on to the next one? Right. On the next one, <coughs> the Sadi. was one hell of a revamp. Holy shit. It wasn't easy. It is less mechanical. It's less of a complete uh, gameplay change. But the essential principle gameplay mechanics have been changed. Oh, I need to specify about the Echo Flip before. Uh, the power. We've realized that there was a fantasy. Um, um, ah, shit. Uh, the Echo Flip could uh, handle most of uh, the gameplays pretty fine, so we stayed on the power that it had. One second, one second. Uh, the Sadi's mechanic works pretty well with the, the, the dolls, the trees and things like that, but <coughs> it takes time to be put in place, which makes some modes more powerful than others for the Sadi, unlike the Echo Flip, which required a power and complete change. Right, this is the moment to talk about it. The Sadi, what do we have? There were so many points that we needed to rework on the Sadi itself, whether it be the summons, or the different uh, pathway, elemental pathways. So the Sadi had many problems. Um, realistically, on some elemental ways, some elemental ways were completely incomplete. They lacked an identity, and that had a bit of random effects and things like that. Uh, like the um, agility error that came quite later. So it's not the philosophy that we have now anymore where we have one element that is stronger than other elements. <clears throat> so 
uh, let's have a look at the obtention and the progression of the variance. So we wanted to, so what have we done? The identity of every way, we have completely reworked it. Uh, we will go back and get back into more detail. So in generic terms, the time to put your play as a sadi is quite long. To put a tree, to place the tier, and then place a thing, that takes 80% of the time of your play which was the main criticism that the class have, has been getting. Whether it be for the allies or for the enemies, it takes long. The moment anybody plays Sadi, you know the fight is going to be long. Yeah, so this aspect of the fight being lengthy whenever you see it. There were too many things on the field and it took too long to put them in place. So the Sadi was quite weak at the beginning of the fight. But at some point when they put their stuff, their play in the game, they have too much power, too much control on the map. Just it's everywhere once it has so we've limited the number of summons and trees now the maximum you can put in place is six trees uh, knowing very well that if you put a new tree it will kill the oldest tree that you have on on the map and about the um, those you will have one exemplary one of every type so this has nerfed it massively but it will uh, the dolls have been reinforced as a result. They have more resistances, they have more stats. So they are more focused on their role and more powerful. And they have more interactions between each other, the caster and the dolls themselves. A word on the elements? Yeah, so let's go on the elemental pathways. We tried to retain this transversal um, uh, identity between uh, the various ones. So we don't want it to be <coughs> because even if you played one element you still had to go and play other elements in order to complete your game so now we tried to keep this multi-element uh, way of play for the study but now if you specialize you can get a lot more out of it but you can have a mode of play that um, plays all of them out together so there will be one specific elemental way on the MP reduction, which will be the fire one. What? And uh, the strength. So the fire element will be um, uh, MP reduction. <coughs> uh, damage that propagates. AP reduction. Like, uh, uh, I, can't, I don't know the name of it in French. It's uh, bushfire. So the gameplay will turn around trees as well. The strength will remain focused on too many trees. Uh, force of nature, big damage, <laughs> and I must specify that uh, harassment, well, while we use the word for MP reduction, don't do that in real life. Uh, so the strength remains focused on having too many trees, um, earthquake, force of nature, big pointy damage. Now, the water one will be faced or axed around uh, a lot more interaction with the dolls, uh, heals, shields, uh, the... Uh, Voodoo Malediction will be a chance spell now and I'm not going to tell you anymore and there will be infections and and the air one the last one which will be the infection and poisoning so you can renew your infection you can scale up your poisons and a lot more of the agility will be placed around now but we can already see that it's a lot more nicer to have this repetition but you can also always play multi-element and there will also be uh, modifications on the utility spell. Some things will change. But overall, we are on a big up for all the things that were weak. And what was weak, it's the whole that made it strong. But some individual things were quite ass. So we tried, we were uh, very receptive to not put too many MP reduction, uh, too much, too much uh, summon spam, too much tree spams. So we're careful about the strength of the Sadi. We want it to be strong. But early game we don't want it to start being weak and then scale up to be undefeated and the most powerful thing on the map so we want it to be balanced with other stats from the beginning of the game rather than wait for it to become impressive at the end of the game <laughs> thank you very much for the presentation of this i hope we didn't take too much time as we said there will be a dev blog on the study specifically and stuff like that um 
Uh, before midnight tonight, there will be a dev blog that will be released and you will see everything that we've mentioned today in greater detail. So to finish, there will be other classes, three in particular. So here, they're not complete revamps, but there are three classes that have been modified. The IOP, the Enutroph, and the Forge Lance. Knowing very well that there's one last modification on the crowd. There was one last modification that we will talk about at the end. <laughs> Right, on the IOP. <laughs> right, as we've said earlier, that we have a logic of putting everything... Um, <coughs> so the IOP, in order to obtain some spells, the progression was not that great. And there weren't as many uh, spells in uh, all of the elemental ways early on. To go straight to the goal, we have... Oh, oh shit. Uh, so this will attenuate and lessen the effect of having to be mono element. So we have two utility spell that will become elemental. So blow will become air now, and that can use you can use it every turn, and you can uh, to add reinforce the air uh, way, and uh, gathering will be fire. I don't know what that spell is. That will do. Uh, it gathers stuff around a target and these will do you can cast it every turn and it deals fire damage So these two utility have buffed two elemental ways they add placement You can still use them like that, but also damage to enhance some ways Yes without necessarily adding too much uh, and We have made some uh, changes to the conditions of casting some spells uh, some value changes, range changes here and there, but it's just to fluidify the gameplay generally, and you will get more details about this on the dev blog. Excellent. <sighs> on the Enotroph, <coughs> big changes on the Enotroph. Uh, we have changed the spells that you apply that trigger damage later on. Uh, we had one in every uh, element. If you reduce a uh, range or AP or MP, they deal an extra line of damage. So these ones, we've changed them. So these are spells. Individually, they deal more damage. They're stronger in and of themselves. The AP cost is higher and it's really strong in itself. And then it still applies that thing. But we don't have... Uh, we have a fixed value of every... Rock. Every time you trigger the effect, it doesn't scale up anymore. So it's one fixed value with a viable spell that you can use, not as a support spell to add an extra line of damage, but one that you can use in itself. And so, which, if you have tr three triggers and once they're done, the effect go away and you have to put the spell again to balance it with the Foggernaut and the Kra and other classes that have similar mechanics. So if you place it and it lasts for two turns and you use three triggers and it, and it has three triggers. So if you use all three triggers within the first turn, you need to reapply the spell in order to regain the effect. So it makes it more energetic, a better way to use those spells that were completely ignored. And we have two new spells that will come. And I do not know what the name of these things. So we have a s oh. So some uh, elements of some spells have changed, like vivacity. I th oh, I don't know. All right, all right, all right. So vivacity becomes strength and last recourse becomes air. And we've added a little effect anti-summon, like uh, unsummoning that deals more uh, damage on summons, like the name. Uh, we've added it on two, on obsolescence and another spells. So it will synergize with the mechanic that the Enotroph has of healing itself on uh, its summons. But we've also added another variant, that, because last recourse changes positions. Um, uh, there will be a new spell that you can go back to version 1.17 to find out what it is about. It's a new spell that will be the opposite of uh, the one that removes 100 MP from everything. So, Forge Lance, it's only the fire uh, pathway that was bothering us. So what was bothering us about this is managing multiple states with um, the 
shatters on multiple targets. The idea is simply to have this fire element away that has that is more uh, efficacious on mono target than other elemental ways. But the idea of a forge loss is to hit an AoE. You still remain that. So the I, they've they've renamed the spell is what I say in here. And we move to three lances on every target maximum. <laughs> so instead of six, it's gone down to three. So every target, every spell that puts a lance on targets, some will augment the um, the damage from the lance coming down. Some will augment the damage from the effects. It will fluidify and make it more efficacious. And we think it is even better right now. It's really difficult to put it into words and explain to you what is happening. And we recommend always as the best course of outcome to go and test it for yourself so you can see the exchanges we're trying to explain. And the two, one last word on the crowd. And I've seen some words on the Zellor as well. Yes, 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 yes. All right, on the crowd, there were some modifications. There's a change on the, mo on the class that will come in this update, 272. So it's Tyrannical Arrow that will, uh, as I explained to you on the Anitroph uh, spells, there will be a limit, a global limit on the spell. So when, so to limit the abuse, like Tyrannical is quite strong. So what has, so the triggers will be split the three, will be cumulative. You don't have three for uh, intelligence and three for agility. So you don't have 14,000 triggers. You have three to use however you want, either movement or pushback, PVP or PVM, because that spell was completely broken in both well. And for Zello now, we haven't modified it this update, but normally we will keep you updated where we are with it. The idea is to modify Zellor before the end of the year. Uh, maybe even slightly before Unity or after it released. We're not going to tell you the exact date. We have hesitated the moment. It was, it was predicted to be, it was projected to be here. So we had a weird uh, elemental repetition, just like we had on the Enotroph. There will be some changes about that. And it will be on the same token to see some changes on the PvP work, Zellor has some difficulties. But I'm not telling you anymore. People will focus the spell obtention, the elemental ways, the repetition of them. And it will be the occasion to make some modifications and uh, enhancement to PvP where it is a bit too broken. And I can even add one thing. This is the beta. So we will do little modifications here and there for other classes that we haven't announced right now. But yeah, I'm just, maybe the tank Sakri might have, might see a bit of a nerf. <laughs> what? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and everything that has gone under our radar, things that we have not seen pretty well, we will go back to all of those. We will make some modifications, just keep an eye on things. Maybe the Fekka, the Foganaut, we are keeping an eye on those. If we need to make any modifications, we will make those modifications. So just expect some things to happen as outside of the classes we've discussed today. So there will be a change log with every beta. There's at least once a day for the first week or two, uh, but we will see. Maybe two, maybe three per day, we see. We'll see, depending on maintenances and what we get. And this brings us to the end of the presentation. Just to remind everyone, there will be... Dev block. <coughs> They've mentioned in the beginning, by the way, that there is a live for Unity specifically. So there's a dev blog that will be posted tomorrow at three with uh, the beta opening. Why at the beginning of the beta? Because if we realize that there are problems between now and tomorrow at three, we can change the change log. So now we're doing the last test on the beta, which will be published at the same time as the release of the beta. And that is it for the small precisions. And if you don't have anything else to add, I propose we take some questions. Do not hesitate. Try not to put mega blocks of questions and we'll try our best to answer it. Should we do the Q&A as well? <coughs> have you modified the... Um, have you modified the uh, Infinite Dreams? Nope, we've added nothing. There will be two new... Uh, they will be added to the Narcas. 
and in themselves there will be the boss modifications will be uh, will affect the dreams so we will see them there so all the boss and the ones that we haven't told you about they will also be modified in dreams when you're doing them for <coughs> the 20 year tournament We've talked about this before uh, in the February. There will be a tournament for the 20 year celebration. We will go back to you on the topic as soon as we have finalized everything. Knowing very well that there was a map um, event where we've asked you to make maps and we've picked some of them that will figure in the 20 year tournament. Narkes, Narkes Leo. So the big ones. Or is it? I don't know. They said Narkes. There were no modifications on the matchmaking and stuff like that on Colosseum. We had little abuses in Colosseum during the last days with... Um, I don't have to say exactly. Uh, some people have tried... So, Big chests, big chests. <laughs> so some people have done some abuses with Colosseum and stuff like that. We have, uh, uh, we will not tell you anymore. We will make some modifications up to the last day of the update, but we'll not tell you in exact detail what they've been doing. Do you have any news on the hero function of uh, Wakfu that you're bringing on? You can ask Papino next week when he comes around. Colosseum. Too much weight when you get close to legendary. Yes, it's really hard. It's something that's really hard to balance between finding balanced fights and reduce the abuses that we've spotted in the last. I'm not telling you this to pawn you off, but in all games, highly competitive, when you get to the last top, it's really, really complicated to find matches. And that's why our rules are more and more lax on the waiting times, but we can't really go down. Um, under a certain minimum, otherwise they would be too unbalanced. We have something that is quite satisfying right now. We will continue to try and better it, but we're not making drastic decisions so far. That When will the update happen? The 18th of June. To summarize very rapidly, on the 18th of June, we will move, we will use the migration tool that will allow us to transform all the uh, all old items to the new ones. The rules are precise on the dev blog, so if you have any questions or any objects that you don't know what's going to happen with it, all the questions and all the answers should be on the dev blog. If you have any questions, go. If you don't have any uh, questions, put them in here. Legendary items only will be affected in the next update with this new tool. For the alliances. Nothing is in the plans for now. We've talked about it from multiple lines. But for this update, there's nothing, no change predicted for um, the... There were many questions on the identities of... There is a dev blog that is coming. It's in post. I don't know what, that, what the question was. You'll have more answers on the dev blog for anything that we've missed. We'll do some polls and query whatever the hell they were talking about. Missed that. Right, I think I'm gonna call it a day. They're just staring blankly. Oh, uh, the part about the legendary items, all the details will be on the dev blog. Why did you reduce the number of weapons to six? We had to land on a number. Y6. Oh, the dolls. Oh, the dolls. Sadly, Y6. Uh, because uh, they don't have a satisfactory answer. But their tests show that 6 was the optimal. It doesn't overrun the fight. And it's just fine. It's fine. 
uh, test it with six and see if um, the idea is to test it and see you don't want to have too many dolls in the map that's the idea you don't want to have 10 10 is too much change log comes out tomorrow at three with the better opening horizontal scaling of servers I have absolutely no idea what the fuck you're on about <laughs> Nope, they didn't mention which ones in particular. No change for Ebony. No rune recipes change. Is there a Unity uh, beta? Yes, it will be this summer. We're nearly in summer. No, nothing on Crocobeer Potato. You will be able to see Unity during the Japan Expo in July, where Dofus will be will have a stand, and uh, you'll be able to uh, you'll be able to pick some cards and scratch them to get some exclusive items. Not exclusive, but before everybody else. Uh, those items are usually rare in the game because it takes six to a year after they're released for them to be added to the game as a very rare drop. PVM, PVM, co uh, the Colosseum quotes and ladder will stay on the same ELO standard. This has been brought up. No, 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 it's in France, it's in Paris, the Japan Expo is not in Japan. <laughs> It's a stand, it's an event called the Japan Expo. <laughs> <coughs> Will there be a shadow hat uh, uh, during the expo? Uh, no, but <laughs> you can go and fight some mobs and drop it. Right, I'm going to cut it here. Thank you ever so much for watching, everyone. Uh, I will turn this into a sort of short summary video when I get the time. I'm not sure when, but I will do my best to try and turn it into a short summary video for those of us who have missed it. <laughs> so they don't go back and watch... Um, Oh, oh, the existing chests that we have, will they, oh, oh, if you have chests already, uh, after, if you don't open them, you will, they will be added to existing chests. Let's go. <laughs> I don't know exactly which chest there will be on. He's trying to find out which chest they will be on. They are on. This is the answer to your question. Drum roll, everyone. The Destiny one. It will be in the Fantastic one. And the Brumaire, the Imaginary one. So purple and uh, orange? Yellow? I don't know. Fantastic and uh, yeah. <laughs>